Okay, um, last month uh, we made uh, little uh, birdhouse ornaments like this. And from outward appearance, they all look the same. <laughs> the difference being is the amount of weight and the amount of machining that was done on them. Where the first one, what I call procedure number one, is like this one up here where there was no hollowing and uh, it was turned without, it was, it was turned in, in one, one direction like that with no reversing and the, the lid was turned like that with no reversing. So without, it, without any special, special tools, you can make a simple one like that. The drawback on this one is it weighs about an ounce. Then, then procedure number two has a little bit of hollowing on it. And it, 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 it weighs about uh, eight tenths of an ounce. And I, and I use the fixtures that I'm going to be showing you today. I use some fixtures on this one. And then this is the procedure number three that has an extensive amount of hollowing on it. And this one weighs about a half an ounce. So what I'm going to do today is, is when, I, when I did that presentation, I used some homemade fixtures and jigs to, uh, to reverse the pieces and, and turn them. So what I'm going to do, do today is show you how I made those fixtures to reverse them. Very small ones. <laughs> uh, so on, on the first one, I, I, like I say, I turned it with, with in that orientation on the lathe, where the, 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 chuck was, the chuck was here, and I turned it all without reversing. I turned, turned the tenon on it, drew, put a hole, put a quarter inch hole in here, and I put, when I, when I did it, I used, I used this live center that has a quarter inch fixture on the end. Well, you may not want to go out and buy a live center to do that, uh, but I use that for a lot of other purposes. Uh, you can take your, the live center that came with your mini lathe. This the live center looks like that. It comes with that, that point in there. Well, that point fits in a taper. And that can be knocked out. If, if you never knocked it out before, it's not going to come out that easily. <laughs> uh, say, what, what you need to do is drill a hole in the, you want to support it here, drill a hole in a block of wood and support it on the block of wood. Then you take a punch and hit it with a hammer. And it might take a pretty good blow with a hammer to knock it out initially because it's in there pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fixture to go on the end of that that gives you the quarter inch uh, fitting like I used on that other live center. So that's the first thing we'll do is make that uh, a little quarter inch or a quarter inch fitting to go in there. Oh, and before I forget about it, I did a demo on, on a, a necklace, uh, necklace pendants. Uh, this was back in 2014, I think it was. So this, 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 this goes through a lot of the same steps that I'll be showing you today. Show you a lot of the same steps I'm going to be showing you today. And if you'd like a copy of that, just send me an email to gwa-turner at hotmail.com. And then those of you who missed the demonstration last month, I've also got a paper with drawings about the, the three different procedures on the birdhouse ornaments. Same thing on that. Send me an email to gwa-turner at hotmail.com. So we start out with this little block of wood between centers. I've already pre-marked them. Okay, the first thing I want to do is put a, a 5 8 inch tenon on there to fit in my, in my chuck. Got a uh, little fixture here that I got from, from Rockler and it's got all this uh, in, in eight eighths all the way from quarter inch up to uh, five inches for setting easily setting your setting your caliper. We'll run the speed up to about 1800 or so. First thing we'll do is make it round because it's kind of hard to make that tenon on there if you got those knobs one or other. So I'm going to go to a, a, a deep fluted gouge here commonly referred to as a bowl gouge. 
and I'm just going to use the, 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 the flute on the side, sort of like what you'd use a skew, just to make that round. Okay, so and we'll make it about half inch long. And may or may it, it it went in there pretty. It's, it's turning pretty smooth. If it, if it wasn't turning when I put that in there, it may not have stayed. This may not have stayed in the center, so I can use that because that existing point because it is running true. If it if it wasn't running true, I'd go ahead and face that end off, and uh, and, and create a new center point. And I, I bring it up like that instead of instead of bringing it about here and latching it down, then running it in like that. There's always a little bit of free play in there. So what I do is I, you start it up like that and let it find the center, then latch it down. What are you using there? This is a talon with the, uh, I think they're called pin jaws, I'm not sure what the jaws are, but that's a, a talon, a one-way talon chuck. Okay, here's the point that came out of there. And I'm gonna measure the small diameter and it's midway between 7 16 and, and 3 8 which would be uh, 13, yeah, thir no, 15, 15, 30 seconds. I'm going to step back away from there a bit and go down and form that diameter. Now, I haven't rounded the points on this. The reason I'm stopping, cutting, turning it off, because I haven't rounded the points on that. And if I try putting it in there, it could catch. And in fact, I probably should do it this way. Just so I've got that setting on there. I'll go ahead and use that to set my caliper. Okay, there's my there's my dimension there. So now I can I can come in and let it ride on there. Just a little bit more. I'll hit the reverse button that way. I wasn't cutting. Wouldn't cut in reverse. Okay, there's that dimension. Okay, now the, the length of my uh, point is, uh, is just over half an inch. So I'll come up from the, from the left side of that and mark the length of my taper. And now I need to measure the large diameter. And that's right at the 7 16 so I'll reset my caliper, and I'll come in on the left side of that mark and then make the second diameter. Okay. 
So now I just need to create a smooth taper from the large diameter down to the small diameter. We'll just take a little bit of little bit of material off over here to make room. And I'm just using a little uh, shop made skew from a quarter inch piece of high speed steel. Okay, so there's my the top of my and there's the bottom. So I need to need to part it off down there at that point. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll just remove this down to about about an eighth of an inch or so. Well, I was going to saw it off, but since it did that, we'll just go ahead and finish it off with a skew. a little bit of curl over there. Okay, so now we can just bring up that, that life, the, the life center and just press it on there. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and create my quarter inch, quarter inch uh, uh, point to put on the end there for the, uh, so I can use my Rockler thing now to set that to a quarter inch. There's my quarter inch, quarter inch tenon. I'm just going down and try not to cut it all the way this time and show you with the saw. Hey Dan, you used it three times. Show us the show us your calibers again. Did you just did you round the ends? I on, on, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, on these, the, 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 they come with the points very sharp. <coughs> and if you, if you try to do rub with it run, running like that, it'll catch. So what I've done is I've rounded the points off both both in this direction and also in this direction to round. So there's, there's any sharp edges there to catch. I seem to remember in uh, prior demos you used to use a modified wrench. Well, yeah, well, I could have done that instead of, instead of adjusting that caliper. In fact, I brought the wrench with me. Uh, a quarter inch wrench instead of instead of adjusting the caliper to a quarter of an inch. I got a quarter inch wrench here. I could have done done it like that with a wrench to use for the for the die, for the dimension. Sure. And, and, and what you did is shut one side. No, I I don't modify it. It's just okay. the way it came off the store. Now, I've seen people where they'll they'll sharpen this point here and cut this point back, and then then actually use that to cut the tenon. Uh, but I don't do I, I don't modify it at all. That's just the way it came off the shelf. But those work very well for measuring yeah. exactly mm -hmm. what you need. In fact, it's probably a little bit better because I, the dimension I got here now is probably exactly a quarter of an inch, or a wrench is slightly, or maybe a few thousandths over a quarter of an inch. So if you want a real snug fit into a quarter inch hole, using the wrench gives you that benefit because it's going to give you something that's just a few thousandths over a quarter of an inch diameter. Okay, and then imagine just sawing that off. Oh, saw it off on this side. So there you have a, a, a shop-made fixture to uh, that's quarter inch. 
So I can use that now to come in and, and go in the end to support the end of that when I'm turning that, uh, that body without reversing it at all. And I can use that to support that while it's, while it's uh, I always, always provide tail stalk support whenever possible, just to get rid of any possibility of chattering. Okay, next step. Body. Now, the, the, uh, when, I, when I turned this, it was in that orientation on the lathe. The, the, the chuck was up here, and I, I bored a three-quarter inch hole in there. And, and, and then brought the life center up to support it and actually formed this all without reversing it. You could reverse it on, on one of the, th the same fitting I want to make for this chuck down here. I could have used that, that, the top and reversed it onto the fitting that I'm going to make for this one and reversed it using that. It's just a, it's only a quarter inch deep. It's not going to give you that much support. Okay, and the, uh, the one-way life center, the life center that comes with, with this lathe is a knockoff of a one-way life center. And the, uh, Powermatic is a knockoff too. This one has the same thing. It has a point that will knock out. And th that point is tapered so I could do the same sort of fitting in the one-way life center also. Okay, now for the, the next, so for making the threaded fixture. Uh, you, I, make, I make these threaded fixtures for a lot of different purposes. Here, here's the two that I'm going, to, I'm going to show you making these today. And these are the fixtures that I use for supporting uh, the, the, the base is, is this fitting here, this fixture here supports the base. I've got a 5 8 inch on the tip down here and 3 quarter there. So I've got support at the 3 quarter inch and support at the 5 8 when I want to reverse the body. And then this one has got a, a quarter inch or 3 quarter inch tenon. And since it's, it's, it's only an eighth of an inch deep, I wanted something a little bit firmer than wood. So I used, uh, we'll just say PVC for the sake of argument. Uh, made a PVC which is a much solider and then I always drill a hole through the center so if, I, if my, perp, my, my goal is to make a very tight fit well when, when you get that roof down pretty small you don't want to be prying it to get it off so I've always bore a hole through the center so I can come in with my knockout bar and, and knock it out instead of trying to pry it off the top Okay, here's, here's a couple of other fixtures. This is the ones that are covered in that paper. These are the ones that I've used for necklace pendants. You know, they're threaded on, on the, the thread straight on my spindle. I got one that's curved for the, front side, for the back side of the pendant and one that's flat for, the, uh, for doing the front side of the pendant. So that's for the necklace pendants. And here's, here's some that I did for uh, my uh, uh, segmented projects. It's threaded. This is just MDF. Uh, I've heard people say you don't use MDF because it'll split. But so what I've done is I've taken screws and I run the screws all the way through here. You can see this screw comes, it came out right there and I fall it off. And this screw comes in a little bit shorter than that. So the screw is going in from both directions to hold that MDF to keep it from, from separating. So what I did on that is I put circles on it. I mounted over here on the tailstock. And, uh, and when I'm building my segmented piece here, I use those rings, the rings on there to help me get my, my segment, my, layers centered and then what once I get the layers glued up then I got another one here it's got sandpaper on it I bring that up and just by hand I'll just turn it like just by hand and, and, and flatten that top top ring on the segmented piece so that's another another use for the threaded fixtures here's one that you can use this either as a vacuum chuck or for reversing your bowl you want to take the foot off the bowl you can just use it just plain. It's got foam rubber, it's just PVC pipe with foam rubber on it. I can reverse the bowl and it, it hold, it'll, it'll re the bowl will rest against there and I can bring the tail stock up and clean off the bottom except for the very little nib. And then I can just, just take the nib off by hand. Where if you've got a vacuum chuck, then you can take this tail, tail stock away altogether and, and do the complete bottom with it held on with the vacuum. And that's been coated, the, the MDF is very porous. So it's, in, it's been coated with uh, epoxy and, uh, and, and shellac to seal the, the MDF up so it doesn't leak. Here's another one that I use. It's got a, I don't know if you've seen any of my Christmas ornament demos where I, the icicle, the finial has always got a, a quarter inch tenon with a 45 degree taper to go into the body of the, of the uh, ornament. Well, I've got here, I've got a quarter inch hole with a, with a 45 degree taper so I can, I always turn my, I took on finial with the with the, the 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 base of the finial out here 
and the tip up here. So I do it all, everything supported between centers. So then once, once I part it off here, I want to be able to clean that point up a little bit so I can put it on here and I can stick my icicle and finial in there and then finish off the point, the tip of the, the finial or icicle. So that's another application. And then for bottle stoppers, I always uh, thread my bottle stop. Well, when I use the stainless steel ones, I thread my bottle stoppers uh, using, using the Ruth Niles mandrel. Uh, and I did made these up for when I put the finish on the bottle stoppers. I didn't want to tie up my mandrel to put let the finish dry. So I make it up a bunch of these. You can just put your finish. I don't turn it on here. I just screw it on there to put the finish on. So I put it on and let it spin and put the you know CA glue or whatever to finish you want. I got probably a dozen of those where I could have have a, have different bottle stoppers going that many bottle stoppers going at one time, and I had to wait for the finish to dry so before I can move on to the next one. So that's just an idea of the different types of threaded fixtures that go on the spindle. So now I'm going to show you how to make that threaded fixture. I'm going to start out with, uh, with some, uh, uh, this is, I don't know if this is MD, I mean uh, Baltic Birch or not. Uh, this came from, I'm a member of uh, Georgia Associated Woodturners, GAW, and we meet down at uh, Georgia Tech's uh, Digital Fabrication Lab. And they've always got neat, neat scraps in, this, in the dumpster. So this is some plywood that came out of Georgia Tech's dumpster. So I don't know what it is, whether it's... Uh, plywood. Yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's a high density, got a lot of plies to it. Uh, so I'm gonna, and I just for this, so you, you can make these any size you want from, from, from whatever, whatever it needs to suit your purpose. I, I just happen to think these about two and three quarters or something. So I take two of those, and what I need is I need a total thickness that's gonna be longer than what my spindle is. So I could have made that a little bit shorter, but I'm gonna show you one step. So I'm gonna be, after it's threaded on there, I'm gonna be drilling through it with a Forstner bit. So I want a bit of a space in there so I don't run my Forstner bit into the end of the spindle. So this is gonna be uh, the, the length of, uh, of my th threaded block. And I glue those together. And the way I glue, I, I don't use the Rob Austin technique of gluing where you put the <laughs> bottle of glue on here yeah. and then you squish them together. I just apply a moderate amount of glue on, on there and I'll, I'll take it, the blocks like this, and just turn them like that just to start distributing the glue. And I always, uh, where, where the saw, where there's little fibers there, you don't want to run it across like that and bend those fibers over. So wherever that, see, I'm going to rub it that way so I don't run, bend the fibers over. So I'm going to just distribute the glue a bit like that and then look at it and then go like that and get the glue distributed over the whole thing. And then you can take it and just start rubbing it together like that and that glue will start getting tacky to where it's really difficult to move. And then once I get it to where it, like, it's hard to move, then I'll just take it like that and, and clamp it in my, my bench vise for 15 minutes, and that's, that's all you need. It'll, it'll, it sets up pretty quickly. So I got a block glued together here, and then I put a little sacrificial spacer block, quarter inch spacer block, uh, in the bottom of the chuck so I don't run my drill bit into the chuck. And again, this is, a, this is another one-way talon chuck. And I mark, I always put a mark on it between jaws one and four. So if I put it back in, in this one, since it's a virgin piece here, but the, if I was going to use that side that's already drilled, but I want to show you how you can tell when you hit the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to go to the virgin piece. So I'm going to put between jaws number one where I got my pencil mark. And this, is, this is, hasn't been in there before. I'll, I'll just clamp it in there like that. And I'll take my pencil and just put a mark between jaws one and four in case they'll take this back take this out and want to put it back in the in the chuck again okay now <clears throat> if you don't have large jaws like that don't want to put the expander out on those large jaws you can do this same process with this little uh, base plate this is a, a easy wood tool faceplate available out here for I think it's uh, for the one and a quarter inch it's like twenty nine dollars and I think for the one H for the mini lathe it's like nineteen dollars for that little uh, faceplate. But I could do the same thing with that. I've got my my this is MDF, but I got my 
my thick my block my threaded block here and I got a, a quarter inch spacer block here so I don't run the, the, the drill bit into the uh, faceplate. And here while I'm at here's here's uh, here's an MDF. Same thing, I've, I've, I've put screws in that come pretty much all the way through, and then once I decide what I'm going to put on here, I'll put screws in from that side then to, to, to interlock those screws in that MDF. But there you can see that you get very, very nice threads on MDF. And that's the one reason you like using the MDF. Yeah, well, MDF is, very, is, is clean threads, but Baltic birch, you can, get the, uh, you can get very clean threads with Baltic birch also. And I got some here too that just just was pine, I think. Yeah, here here's here's just a piece, just two before, that's pine threaded. It, it gives you if you put the, with the CA glue to harden the harden the fibers up, that you can get pretty clean threads just with uh, with the two before. Okay, so first thing I want to do is mark the center. Okay, now I'm going to I'm going to be drilling drilling into there, but I want to make this this surface theoretically is is parallel to this surface back here, but it may not be. So I want to want to put a face on. There. Oh, I forgot to, one thing. I forgot to forgot to tell you what I'm doing here first. Just a minute, let me take this back off. Okay, the 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 when I make this fixture, I want it to rest against this surface here. Uh, so I'm going, I'm going to face it. I'm going to put, use a large force a bit to face that. That's going to be a little bit larger than this surface, this diameter here. And then the next step is I got to make clearance for this shoulder that's here. So you have to look the spindle on your lathe and see what kind of holes you need, what size holes you need to drill. So I need first I'm going to face it, and then I'm going to bore a hole about three sixteenths of an inch deep for clearance on that shoulder right there. Okay, I'm going to use a, this is a uh, 208 inch Forsner bit. It's one of the cheaper ones out here. And I want to position it in there so I can see, so I can see the flute. I'll get it up here so I can see it. I want to be able to see this flute. So when, as, soon as, I, as soon as I bore in there and I get a, a clean shaving all the way across the face of that flute, uh, then it then it's, I've got a nice 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 smooth surface. And that's equal to. It's slightly larger. I think this this diameter here is uh, is just under two and a sixteenth, and that's a two and an eighth. So it's just just as long as it's it's a bigger than this face here. So I want to not a completely milled surface is going to rest against that face. So I don't want to have a ridge on the end that's going to make it cocked. And for the Forsner bits, I'm going to run the speed at about uh, 400 RPM. Okay, again, I'm going to slide it up. I've got that point in there. I'm going to slide it up and, and let the Forsner bit find that point. And you can see there, there I, got, I got my cut is all the way across the face of that uh, Forsner bit. Okay, now the diameter of the uh, of the shoulder. I should have measured that, and I didn't. I think it's the uh, got several Forsner bits here. Make sure I get the right size one on there. One and a quarter inch. That the diameter of that other shoulder is probably a little bit less than one and a quarter. So I'm going to take a one and a quarter inch Forsner bit, which should be probably my next one here. Yeah, it's one and a quarter, and I'm going to go in with this to about three sixteenths, just to just for clearance on that. Uh, and 
And it doesn't matter if you go in a little bit deeper because it, you know, it, the threads don't go all the way back anyway. So it's not going to hurt if you go a little bit deeper than what uh, that shoulder is. But that should be plenty there. Ah, 3 sixteenths on the button. Okay, then the next step, uh, th this is a one and a quarter inch spindle, and uh, if you read, the, I'm going to be using the, the Beal spindle tap. If you read the directions on the box, I know everybody reads the directions on the box, right? Mm -hmm. It says you drill the hole one eighth inch under size, so this is a one, one and a quarter inch spindle, so I'm going to drill a one and an eighth inch hole for the, the thread. Yeah, one and an eighth. So now I'm going to, I'm going to drill, this, drill this in all the way through. The, uh, the, the block and not through the uh, quarter inch uh, spacer block. And again, about 400 RPM. And you can tell, you can feel when it hits to, gets the bottom of, the, of your drilling block, since there isn't any glue on that spacer block, it's going to temporarily just stop going in. It's going, to, it's going to cut a little bit of a disc out that's going to start spinning. There, right there. It, it, it doesn't want to cut anymore because it's, the points on the, on the edge of the Forzner bit has went through and cut a little disc through in the center and it, the, these points stick down farther than what the... These, the, the, the rim of the Forzner bit sticks down farther than, than the cutting edge. So. It, the points have went through this block and the, the, the cutting edge is not there yet. So there's a little bit of a disc down in the bottom there. There's also a distinctive sound difference. There, see, this is, there's that little disc that uh, it cut that little disc out and it didn't want to, it didn't, now I could have forced it and it would cut through that. But if you, if you, you, when you get about the deep depth once, you can tell well, as soon as you hit through the bottom of this, that, that, that little disc starts spinning in there. <laughs> okay, now the next step then would be to, uh, to coat that, those threads with, coat that with CA glue. I use the thin CA glue that's out here, the, the uh, Starbond CA glue out here. The super thin stuff is what I really like. But I'll coat the threads with CA, that CA before I cut the threads. Right now, you could probably with with, with you could probably get decent threads, but there would probably be a bit of tear out. Uh, but when you put the CA in there first, then then you you strengthen those fibers a bit. So when you start cutting the threads, you don't get don't get the, the tear out. So that I would, I would coat that with CA, thin CA, and let it sit overnight. That's why you, that's why you mark it. Yeah, so when I put it back in the chuck, I can put it back in where it was. Okay, we don't need that. Yeah, we'll put it, yeah, we'll leave that in there. Okay, so I've got one here that, uh, that has been drilled. The same as that, only it's been coated with CA. And again, I've got the marks here where the, between jaws one and four. And since I'm going to be running this by hand, I don't want that lathe to, be, to turn on, so I'm going to unplug the lathe. Now, in one step I mentioned, I said you, you, could, you could do it with a faceplate like this. You could actually do the drilling and, and threading on a drill press. You know, again, unplug the drill press when you start threading. And even take the belts off so that you just re there's any back pressure on, the, on the, the spindle when you go, or the chuck when you go to turn it. But if you clamp that block down on the drill press, you could drill the hole put the CA in there, well then you might glue it to the wood, but anyway you, you, you could clamp it down and drill the hole and, put, and thread it on the drill press also, the same thing I'm doing here. Okay now this lathe does not have a lockable, uh, a, a lockable spindle lock, uh, 
So I'm, I'm going to use this method to lock my spindle when I'm doing the threading. Now I've just got a taller post in there so it's up at an angle like that. If I put it down on my shoulder post it might have a tendency to fall out. So you, you could do this, just make a, a wooden dowel, put a block on top of it and use that to support. You don't need to go out and buy a, a special tool rest for it. Just make your own post with a block on the top to support the thing. And the reason I like this is if, if I had, if I was using the spindle lock, when I start threading that, I put a lot, it, it takes some effort to, to cut those threads. You're going to be trying to tighten that chuck tighter and tighter onto that spindle. And it might be it get locked, gets latched on there and it's hard to remove. So this way, I'm not putting any pressure on the threads on the spindle to tighten it up tighter than what it should be, or tighter than what I want it to be. This, the, the, uh, the talon, the, 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 the thread adapter that goes in the talon is tapered, so there's no threads there, but the, uh, the, the Sorby chuck out here and the, uh, the Nova chucks, the, the spindle is threaded, so there's another set of threads. Well, it's got a, a wrench on that, that uh, spindle adapter has a hex shank shaft on it that you can put a wrench on there. Well, then you run the same thing. You'd be tightening the threads on that spindle adapter tighter than into the chuck than what it needs to be. So I like this method of using the, 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 the wrench to hold the, the chuck, and I'm not putting any extra pressure on any threads back here to get, and getting them too tight. Okay, this, this, I really like this, this live center that I got. This, this is a live, the live center is, I got it from Craft Supply. It's, um, it's Craft, I think it's Precision Engineering. It's made in the U.S. and it's available from Craft Supply. Uh, they, the, and when I bought this one, that's the only one they had. But now they've got a Chinese knockoff that's about half the price. But I don't know, I, I just, I'm opposed to buying Chinese stuff. You'd have to pay a little bit more. So I, I would still recommend buying the U.S. version. But the not, thing I like about this is it's got interchangeable tips. It's got a, an Allen screw here. And there's about eight different tips that you can, you can get for that. So we're going to use this tip for this process. And there's other chucks, or other, other life centers out there that have uh, replaceable tips like this. Like no, the Nova chuck, and I think there's some, some Chinese knockoffs of that that have, re, have replaceable tips. But I don't believe they're held, I think they're held in with a magnet instead of uh, a set screw like that. Okay, so we're going to use the, uh, the spindle tap. And the, this, the, the, the tap has got a, a, a a divot in the center, and that's what I use this point for, is to hold the hold it straight. And and on and on the initial first turns, it's important to you need to apply pressure. If if you didn't put pressure in here, you had you the the threads or the the teeth on the, the tap would just try just try to tear the tear the fibers out. So I need to apply pressure on here to force the, those the threads on that tap in instead of pulling the fibers out. So a little bit of wrench, uh, the, a, a longer handled wrench would probably be better, but I like to be able to just leave it on and go all the way around. So that's where I'm using this short handled wrench, even though it does get a little tight at, at, uh, after you get in there ways. So I'm going to turn the, 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 the tap and the, and the live center at the same time. And after I get a few, few curls of, uh, few curls of wood in there, I need to clean those out. Now this tap, when you're, you're tapping in metal, you, back the, you, you break the chips, you back it out and break the chips. Well, for some reason, where the point's on the back, it doesn't like to back up. So I just use uh, compressed air to blow those out. That doesn't seem to want to work. We'll use this method. There's air. You yeah, there's that. air there. We might tear, we might, if, if, the, if the fibers get jammed up in there, it could tear the threads out a bit, so. Okay, there's bottomed out. All 
And like I said, the the tap does not like to back up, so I've I've went all the way through the, the tap. So next, then I come over here to the uh, to the bench vise. And just finish it off over here. So you're cutting them all the way through, Dan? Yeah, go all the way through because, like I say, the tap doesn't like to back up. It doesn't like to back out, so I just run it all the way through. And always get some little little fibers here, so I take just take a file and clean that off. And then I'll I'll come back and put another coat of CA in there to clean those fibers. I mean, what I, another thing I do at home is I'll I, it, it came through from this side to start with. And my theory is is that there's fibers in there that got bent over instead of got cut off, getting cut off. So I'm going to run it through the other way to bend those fibers back the other direction. If they don't cut them off, I'll run it through like that. But the problem is, it really makes a loud squeak. Like you heard over there when I did it, that was minor. It really squeaks when you do that. So I'm not going to do it in here because it's too loud. But I'll, I'll, I'll run it through the other direction to bend those fibers back over the other way. And then I put CA in there to stiffen those fibers up. And then after CA is dry, then I'll run the tap back through from the front, hopefully to cut everything off then. OK, so the next thing then is to glue. Glue, the, glue your whatever, whatever your face block is going to be, glue that on. So it goes through the same process of gluing it on. And you want to make sure you glue it on this surface and not on this surface. You'd be unhappy with yourself if you end up like that. Okay, so uh, we're ready to start making some shavings here. And this is, this is a, uh, a Sorby stem center that I really like. Again, I'm going to mark the center. Okay. Now we can either drill the hole first or afterwards I'll go ahead and drill the hole first so when I start shaping it I know how far I can go down. I guess I didn't, wasn't quite ready for this yet. Okay, now I'm going to, I used a common size of one and a sixteenth for my, uh, for my hole here. And I'll get to that reason I did that later in one of the other steps. I'll tell you why I did that. Again, 400 RPMs, and I want to go in. Yeah, I've got a mark. I've got a mark it there at three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to, going, just going to bore in to, till I get to that mark. the cutting edge. So I want to go in three quarters of an inch. I put the three quarter mark on the on, on the, the cutting edge of the Forsner bit at three at three quarter there and then ooh, that wasn't my three quarter mark. So I've got a hole that's uh, seven eighths inch deep instead of three quarter inch deep. <laughs> Check your mark. Okay, so now I, I want, again, I want to support that. I probably wouldn't have to, uh, but you could get some chattering. I'm going to bring that in.
Okay, now I want, I'm just going to make, first of all, I'm going to, going to make it round so it's round back here. And I want it to be fairly straight across. And I'm going to use a, a, a bowl gouge, or a deep fluted gouge with a sweat back. Well, this is the David Ellsworth uh, gouge and grind. Okay, I got about 1300 RPMs. I'm using the, the lower edge of the, of the tool down here and I'm, I'm coming across sort of like what you do with the skew. Okay, we got that round. Okay, next thing then I'm going to just shape the nose so I don't want to just give me working space. Okay, and I'm going to just knock off the sharp edge back here on the back. A little bit of scraping cut and mark, knock the sharp edge off there. Now that's, uh, that's fairly smooth, but you can smooth it up a little bit more. Of course, you can use sandpaper on it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a shear scraping cut. When you sharpen the, the, the gouge, you get a little bit of a burr here on the inside edge. I can use that burr as a shear scraper. And I'm going to apply it with the flute against the material and just, just hold that flute at a 45 degree, or that cutting edge at a 45 degree angle and get a nice wispy, nice wispy fiber cut off of there. Okay, so there's, there's my fixture. I, I didn't, didn't define my, my definitions. A fixture is something that affixes itself to a machine or a tool or a household appliance or whatever is a fixture. So this is a fixture. It's threaded. It's threaded to affix to the lathe. The same as that's a fixture. It fixes, it's a fix, it fixes itself onto the lathe and use it for for machining. Well, a jig is something that positions your workpiece in position so that you can machine it. So that's my fixture and the piece that goes in the hole here is my, is my, is my jig. So that's the fixture, completed fixture, ready to put a jig in it. And I would, uh, that's my material I'm going to use for a jig.